Hey, welcome to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast, a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network. Big news out of Salt Lake City, Utah, where we have a school of pharmacy that is going to provide tuition free for all in-state and out-of-state accepted applicants to the school. So what I want to do is take a deep dive into what this really means. Is it a good deal? And you know, this is hopefully the start of making pharmacy school much more affordable and also helping that is if the debt load goes down on pharmacy students, uh, will more of them be able to do residency afterward? So first, let's hear the announcement from the dean, and then I'll kind of deep dive and see if this is a good deal. Are they good at, is the University of Utah a good school for matching with residency? Do they pass the NABplex well? What's the cost of living in Salt Lake City? Uh, and so forth. So again, we're kind of going from uh, the debt-free pharmacy student where if you go to a different school, you can change your you know, final debt load significantly. And, and we're talking about probably about $30,000 in this case, uh, and then kind of depending on in-state, out-of-state, all those other things. Uh, but uh, this could be a, a really good deal, but let's make sure. So again, the debt-free pharmacy student I wrote with Sydney Day, uh, student at the University of Iowa who uh, is graduating very close to debt-free and may actually uh, graduate debt-free here uh, in a couple of months. All right, so let's go hear the Dean's message. We'll begin offering full tuition scholarships for all first-year students entering the PharmD program in fall 2023. Okay, so that's one part of it, but what about the other three years? Are you now an out-of-state student paying extra? And I'm going to fast forward to that part of it. Out-of-state students in the PharmD program can qualify for in-state tuition until they graduate. As the first pharmacy school... Okay, so, so let's take a deep dive into what that tuition actually is. So here's the tuition fees per semester. Again, it can go up by a little bit. Uh, this is for summer, fall, spring 2023, so this year. And when we look at their curriculum, we're going to see that the first semester is 15.5 to 17.5 hours. Next semester is 15 to 17. Oops, that's third year. Uh, but 16.5, 16, 16.5, 16.5. And the reason I, I mention that is that their tuition is a little wonky in that they have tuition for each set credit hour. So I don't know where the 16.5 falls. I mean, I guess it falls somewhere between 16.353 and 16.658. But you're talking about $16,000 a semester. Now, the issue is what about that final year? Um, the third professional year, it looks like summer semester, you have a summer semester. And then the fourth professional year, you also have a summer semester. And that one is eight to 12 hours. And this one is six to 12 hours. So let's see what that adds. So if you're looking at 12 hours, it's 15,000. If you're looking at eight hours, you're looking at 13,000. That doesn't make sense. All right, so the math is really weird. Um, when you have your uh, credits, you don't have your tuition. So we're looking at an extra $15,000 in summer, extra $15,000 in, in basically in both summers. So another $30,000. So let's add all of this. Okay, so again, this is really confusing. But what I want to do is, is go through what it would look like with that scholarship and without it. So without the scholarship, it looks like it costs around 162000 to go. And these are the real issues that I'm unclear about. It says 8 to 12 over summer here, P3 summer. And then I think it was... 12 over P4 summer. Yeah, it's 6 to 12 over P4 summer. So because it's so fractionally not helpful to go down in credits, we'll just leave it, but you would save a thousand or two thousand dollars. So this is the what it would look like if you 
got the scholarship and then so we're looking at saving around thirty thousand dollars a little bit more than that and we can do this as a percentage so equals sum c11 minus d11 okay so thirty three thousand equals sum e11 over <clears throat> the original c11 20 percent so you get about a 20 percent deal there but what would really be better for the students is that if they could skip their p3 summer or p4 summer and stack those classes in the curriculum uh, with electives or something like that and, and it looked like there were many more i just split the difference here uh the the actual um, curriculum says this can go up to 20 something and spring can be quite lower and we know that with with off blocks I guess and things like that but it, it looks like you're you're gonna end up at about hundred and twenty nine thousand six hundred and four and correct me if I'm wrong on this and that you would save about 20 percent so that being said let's take a look at the actual numbers and see if Utah is a quality school so I go into pharmacy school rankings for residency and I look and I see okay well let's look at the percentages you know are they good with the match rate you know what's their interview rate what's their persist rate so the only place where utah really struggles is and when i say struggles the interview rate is about 85 percent where those that go registered to applying 85 percent of them will get an interview the difference between you know 69 where they're ranked and the ones that are above is fractional like it's tiny 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 percentages if just one more person had gotten an interview it would throw their score way up the all important match rate is number 34 in the country at 85 percent so of those 85 percent that do make it from registered to active with list uh, 85 percent of those will match and then the overall persist rate is number 38 in the country. So when you talk about those that started the process to become pharmacy residents, got through the interview, got through the match, 72%, uh, which ranks number 38 in the country, is there. So they're high quality school when it comes to residency. What about their NAPLEX pass rate? So you can find the NAPLEX pass rate here. It's uh, around 90%. You can see that there's a reduction from 60 to 57 to 41. So quite a quite a reduction in number of students that were going there and this happens when a school is trying to maintain quality and not just accepting anybody and, and trying to fill their seats and so what they're doing is is they're kind of taking the NYU model where uh, you and then Arizona State MBA did this too where uh, you give some either all or part of the tuition free uh, to get the best students in the country and then so pharmacy school rankings for residency, we check it out. It's number 47 in the country for NAPLEX. So good match rate, uh, high NAPLEX scores, but is it incredibly expensive to live there? So let's check the cost of living. And what I like to do is use Des Moines because we're in the Midwest and then we'll use New York. So if you are in Des Moines and you move to Salt Lake City, you would have to make about 6,000 more a year if you made $50,000. So the median two bedroom apartment rent in Des Moines is really cheap. It's like under $700. In Salt Lake City, it's about $1,200 or $1,300. So a little bit more when you're talking about rents, but overall pretty relatively reasonable cost of living. Obviously Salt Lake's a really nice city to live in. Uh, but let's look at what happened if you were in Salt Lake City and then you ended up going to uh, New York. So I'm not sure why it's not, oh, maybe it wants. I'll put in Utah and that'll kind of maybe they'll no, that's weird that it's not allowing it. So it found the new city, but it didn't find the old one. So it doesn't like that as a standard. So let's do it the reverse way. Let's go into Manhattan and see what it would cost to live in Salt Lake. So if you made $50,000 in Manhattan, you would only need to make $19,000. Uh, in Salt Lake, the cost of living is 60% lower uh, in Salt Lake than it is uh, in Manhattan. So uh, reasonable cost of living uh, is what you have. So uh, let's, let's talk about that last part because Idaho State is also doing this. And let me kind of pull. Okay, so here's Idaho State's. And of course, they've got this 
blasted across their <laughs> front web page. But uh, new up to $90,000 in program costs can be saved. Non-residents can save big. And then the uh, fees per semester, because they have multiple um, sites, are it says that, let's see, so... Uh, non-resident tuition waiver, so they get out-of-state, in-state tuition in their first year automatically if they have a 3.0 or greater. And then in years two through four, they have to request Idaho residency with the Office of the Registrar in the spring semester of program year one. And the only thing I would be concerned about is that guaranteed. Can I become uh, a non-resident? And so you get to see that, okay, here is what it looks like uh, in terms of you know, tuition and fees. And so when we look at the tuition and fees and we see that it's about $12,000 uh, overall, the question is, if I were to compare Idaho State University to Utah, would it actually be cheaper to pay for all four years? So unfortunately, when you look at the curriculum, it doesn't provide what we need, which is, okay, you've got a fall and spring and then these are full year academic courses, the IPPIs, and then fall and spring, and then again, fall and spring. But the question is, do you have to pay for summer? And it doesn't make that clear. Uh, fourth year, um, it again, it doesn't really make it clear how many semesters you're in school. So um, that would be a big part of what you want to ask at Idaho State. So let's start take the costs and put them in the spreadsheet and see what happens. And so when I look at this, it actually is significantly cheaper um, to go to Idaho State. So it looks like about 106,000, even if they have that extra P3, P4 summer, and then um, about 129,604 uh, to go to Utah. And maybe this is off by 13,000. The reason why I'm not sure is because when I look at um, this page on the Idaho State website where they compare costs. Uh, when you're talking about Idaho State University, it looks like compared to Washington State in-state, they're about the same, but out of state, much more expensive. Oregon State in-state, uh, significantly less. Uh, the Anchorage one um, costs a bit more, but then certainly cheaper than Washington, Utah, and here's where I see 15289. I'm not sure where they got that number. It's because my data show that it should be about 160, but maybe it is. So that number is going to go down and should be uh, addressed here. I'm not sure how it could get up to 223 and 279 so quickly, but maybe. Um, Pacific, uh, Roseman, which is in Utah, uh, Creighton, which is in Omaha, and then the average in the California schools. So, um, you know, I, I think that when you're looking at this and you want a you know, high quality program, obviously Utah is you know, up there with all the data. And I think that, you know, Idaho State would definitely be uh, worth a look as well. But I, I think the more important thing is that we're kind of figuring out that now we're seeing that some of the schools are addressing that the cost is just simply too high and that they're they're making some changes. So I'll, I'll give you some other ones that are doing similar stuff. All right, so here are the other schools that I know of, and you know you can email me if there's other schools that have great discounts, but uh, Belmont provides scholarships up to 25,000 per year for eligible candidates. You'll have to ask them what that means. Uh, Drake University, 26,000 per year for eligible applicants. Creighton scholarship awards of up to $100,000. And again, it's on their website, split up uh, over the duration over four years. Um, resident and non-resident tuition of $26,000 each year for MUSC students. Looks like they're making the, the fun um, image there. And then uh, let's see, University of Illinois Chicago, uh, in-state and out-of-state per semester is about 12522 So again, I, I think that you know it all comes back to what your goal is. And if your goal is to be a debt-free pharmacy student, then I think it's time to start looking at many more choices. 